Bike blogger here. Topic of the day. Is it safe to bike commute? Riding our Wabi Lightning single speed bicycle today. I'm gonna go on some bigger roads, see what it's like, see if we get honked at. Is it safe? Is it safer than riding in a car? We'll find out. All right, so we're beginning in a nice quiet park. I'm gonna ride our bike onto a busy, nasty, polluted road. There's five things. Let's just jump straight into it so you don't have to fast forward in the video. Five things you need to do. Number one, you need good bike lights. If you ride at night, it's essential that you have good bicycle lights. Number two, lane position. If you don't want to get uh, sideswiped or you don't want to get close passes, take the lane. That is, take the entire lane. Take as much of the lane as you possibly can, being that you are a little bicycle, and uh, force other people to change the lane. If the lane is really wide, like let's say 14 feet wide, you could split the lane. But uh, normally you don't want to be splitting the lane because most bicycle car accidents happen from uh, motorists passing cyclists, typically on faster roads roads with higher speed limits which leads me to number three to avoid these sort of encounters where they don't expect to see you that is motorists don't expect to see cyclists on the road where uh reaction times are lower that is yeah less time to react to stuff pick a bicycle route a bicycle commute where you don't have to go on a big busy road if you can possibly avoid roads with blind corners that is blind spots just in the road pretty much where you're coming up on a very steep hill or on a tight turn and it's more likely that people aren't going to be able to see you or react at all let's get out into the road so to take the lane you get in the middle of the lane just like this this lane is pretty dang small i'd say it's about nine feet wide not at all possible to share this lane with a motorist it's too small <laughs> if you split this lane you're gonna get buzzed that is people are gonna go really nearby you scare the heck out of you possibly cause accidents a lot of motorists you know it's not entirely their fault they don't know how to react to seeing a cyclist on a bigger road this isn't that big of a road speed limit is 35 miles per hour i think so not a very big road but it does get quite a bit of traffic and that leads me to time of day so if you can pick a time of day where it's not as busy on the road and most importantly avoid riding your bike when the sun is low and by that i mean i'm gonna let this guy go there's nobody behind me so i can slow down a little bit avoid riding your bike when the sun is very low because that causes basically its own blind spot, so to speak, uh, getting, getting a light in your face. Whew. Hear a uh, ambulance somewhere up ahead. Oh my. And number five is be predictable. So by be predictable, I mean, you know, signal when you're making a turn or changing lanes. I didn't do such a good job of showing that there. I'm gonna stick my arm out saying that I'm going left. It's very straightforward, very simple. Like how do you signal on a bike? It's very simple. You're on a bike, stick your left arm out to signal you're making a left, stick your right arm out to signal you're making a right. You can also use the signals with your left arm to do everything. That is slow down, left turn, and uh, right turn. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little bit a little bit rusty on that. I think if you stick your arm out and up at a 90 degree angle, I think that means you're turning right. I could be wrong. And then if you stick your arm out and down at a 90 degree angle, that means you're slowing down or stopping. So yeah, things to think about. So yeah, those, those five things will really prevent you from getting uh, in accidents. Many accidents happen at intersections, however, a great uh, minority, I guess, or majority or whatever, a lot of accidents happen on busier roads. And that is just because 
you got more inexperienced cyclists riding on these roads you got less attentive drivers because they just feel like they can just you know ride along at a very fast pace always in bunches of other cars that's another thing car accidents happen a lot because the lights uh kind of force cars to travel in packs so they're always around each other and uh when you're driving a car you know it's a lot easier than riding a bike in terms of having to be well you have a feeling of like you don't have to pay attention as much to the road as you would on a bike on a bike you're like oh, oh i'm working real hard and i'm really paying attention to where i'm going and uh in a car you may just start falling asleep <laughs> or you're playing on your phone or something like that these are common things that happen nowadays unfortunately in a car besides everything else you'd be doing i mean i guess it's possible for me to eat a burger while uh riding a bike with one hand it's possible but uh people are much more likely to multitask when they're in an automobile and all they have to do is put their foot to the metal put the foot down and drive because it's so easy especially in a in a um automatic transmission type of car where you don't even have to shift <laughs> so yes i i don't shift on my bike because i have a single speed bike so the transmission is me transmission that's my thing on how fast i want to go so yeah is it uh is it safe to bike commute if you're prepared it is safe to bike commute i mean we're talking about it's very difficult to put these things into statistics i'll link a uh, a website below about you know the commonality of uh, different types of bicycle car accidents north carolina did a few studies over the years uh during the 20 tens i guess the teens or whatever um so there are studies out there but there's very limited information a lot of bicycle car accidents happen by hit and run drivers and that i mean you know people just hit people and they move along although i was surprised to learn based on their data that the majority of all those accidents or i guess i should say the great minority about uh i think i'm hearing a beeping sound uh the great minority about maybe four percent involved uh drunk driving so i wouldn't worry so much about drunk driving uh it does happen though but it, just like with anything else it's just kind of luck of the draw i have a mirror on my bike too it kind of helps for me to stay attentive to what's going on i'm not listening to music and stuff like that either uh but uh whatever you can do to stay attentive to what's going on um need to make a left here actually and i'm gonna look behind me there's a car i'm gonna signal let them know i'm coming over because i'm going way the heck over there okay i'm gonna go up this left turn here but i gotta wait for the traffic um see i am doing <laughs> i'm multitasking right now i'm uh, trying to narrate a video here while i'm riding my bike i do that quite often but i also i'm pretty experienced but uh i wouldn't really recommend doing that if uh, you haven't been riding a bike for very long in traffic because uh it takes a lot of uh i think we can make that left there we go it takes a lot of um paying attention and just anticipating things and uh a lot of it has to do with the reaction time and uh again anticipating things if you see a car uh tire turning you know that means or if they're kind of near the edge of a lane you know that means they're probably thinking about changing lanes or pulling out from the side of the street here and that's another tip so you don't get doored that is when a door opens from a vehicle is to keep yourself at least three feet away that is more than an arm's length away at least in, for an adult that would be one and a half arm lengths at least so uh yeah these are all tips let me know your tips in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you next time on the Bike Vlogger Show. Woo.